yo, yo, man. It's your boy B.R. Ratchet from the We Are Florida podcast presented by Mix One Essentials, man. We got prison stories today, man. And we got a special guest. Ronnie Red, Ronnie Red. This is Ronnie Red, y'all, from Tampa, Florida. <clears throat> Follow me on TikTok, YouTube. Hit the like and subscribe, man. Most definitely. Most What's going definitely. on, bro? How you doing, man? I'm all right, man. How you doing today? Man, it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful, man. Thank you for having me, bro. Same to you. Same yes, to you, man. So how your day been today? Oh, it's been cool, man. It's been cool. You know what, man? Usually it's not this chilly. Y'all got to excuse my voice. Usually it's not this chilly this time of the year. It's kind of chilly today, man. Yeah, it's cold. It's cold like today. Especially for a Florida boy. Yeah, you got to have that jacket yeah, on, yeah, man. Yeah, man. No, come on, man. No question. Most definitely. Most definitely. So, you know what I'm saying? Growing up in Florida, where you from? I'm from Tampa, Florida, man. Born and raised. I'm a okay. real Floridian. Okay, Tampa your whole life? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Tampa my whole life. That's so how I, I was know. growing up out there? Well... <clears throat> Tampa was like, you know, it was like we wasn't country because, you know, Tampa ain't no small city. You know what I'm saying? Tampa, you know, Tampa got right now close to half a million people now. And, you know, since I've been born, it always been over 200,000 people there. You know, so it's just, you know, it's a southern city. It ain't no country city, but it's definitely a southern city. Definitely that. So, you know what I'm saying? Tampa, like, I know it was a lot of stuff growing up, you know what I'm saying, back then, back in the days that, you know, people was getting into, getting influenced by music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who are some of the people you was listening to growing up? Man, God damn, man. Look, man, I'm scared to even say, man, I'm going to end up giving up my age, man. I was influenced by the earlier, you know, hip hop. I'm, you know, I'm going back to Run DMC. I'm going back to LL Cool J. I'm going back to stuff maybe your mamas and your grandmas like, okay. like the true essence of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? And it was like the time that I grew up, we didn't look up the rappers. Like in my era, like how like drug dealers not look up the rappers. Mm-hmm. Drug dealers. It was right the opposite then, way. It was the opposite. The rappers looked up to the drug dealers. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like back then, if you was a rapper, it was like an inside joke. Like, man, goddamn, that nigga rap. Like they was almost laughing at you. But now they winning now, but back then it wasn't like that. So what I mean, what what rapper you could say like that 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 you say when you was coming up, you can you just gravitated to like damn like that's him like you know what I'm saying he he at he what gangsta. age what age because that's tricky right there um if you say an early age or if you say a middle age you say early old, age early age or early age I'm you gonna know say, what I'm saying in your adolescence I'm gonna say in my adolescent years I'm gonna say I was more you know NWA okay. You know, because, the, you know, the shit that Easy e them was talking about, and Dr. Dre them, and, and um, uh, it was it was being duplicated over here, meaning that they was talking about the police brutality. You went through you know it? You went through oh, Indiana? yes, yes, man, in the 80s and stuff like that. You got to think I'm an old head, man. So in the 80s and stuff like that, we went through that. Everything that they was talking about on the West Coast, or as NWA, that's why it had the impact that it had so hard everywhere. That's that, you know what I'm saying? That's why they were successful because mm-hmm. they was the first group to really, you know what I'm saying, to actually, you know what I'm saying, scream about that shit. Fuck the police because everybody was going through it at that time. Yeah, so, yeah, it was more NWA for me because I, I was more drawn to the law of the streets. I've always been drawn to that. Okay. Even, even during cops and robbers, I always want the robber to get away. I ain't never want the cop to get away. I always want the robber to get away. For sure. So what age, you know what I'm saying, did you jump in the streets? Man, I think I started about 12 years old, man. I think I sold my first piece of crack at 12. Yeah. You know, because, you know, crack came out in Tampa, we're going to say in 85. In 85, I was 12. So you do the math. You know what I'm saying? And And that's the first time. I'm going to ask you this, though. Where did you get the crack from? Well... In the neighborhood that I grew up in, it was all around. But that's a good question because I ain't just walk up and just get it off the yeah. ground. But a childhood friend walked up to me that, uh, a, you know, a dude I used to cut yards with. He was like, man, you know, you can get this here 20 and you can make 40 or you can get 100 and make 200. Basically, he was just talking about a double up. So I had some money saved up from when we was cutting yards. And I tried to double the shit up and the shit worked and then it popped off from there. Mm. Okay. So... You know what I'm saying? You got your you got your first piece of rocks or whatever. You you made profit? Like- no, 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 no. I didn't make profit. <laughs> I think for the first two years, man, I couldn't get past three hundred dollars, man. Damn, probably five hundred. But I was living, meaning I had all the attire because I'm going to the mall. I'm mm-hmm. doing all that, but I just get, 
couldn't get past the hump of three hundred dollars or five hundred dollars. Maybe had I been, you know, what I'm saying saving, I could have. I just wasn't. Yeah, you know I'm saying, but but you know, it was like a lot of lessons learned back then. You know, that's like I told a dude that they growing up now, bro, on iPhones teaching them everything. You know, you know what I'm saying? The internet. Back then, we didn't have that. We had real, like, you know what I'm saying? We had real lessons, bro. You know, we under the tree. You know, I was 12 or 13 years old, bro, like, getting schooled by niggas that was 30 and 40 years old, man. Like, like old head niggas, like crackhead niggas and, you know, pimps and players and shit like that. And I'm under that tree at a very young age, and I'm being indoctrinated. You know what I'm saying? So the, so the uh, seed is being planted at an early age. That's why even right now to this day, even dealing with women, the old school, like where I come from, is different. Even if you're a cheater and you a nigga ain't worth shit, you know, you know what I'm saying? We might still buy a woman roses. Don't no young nigga know about that. Ain't no young nigga walking up to a woman fly. on a Monday <laughs> and just done bought a bouquet of roses and gave it to her. But that's the game that we came up under. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was the game, though, back it in the was. day. Nowadays, you know what I'm saying? Niggas just hitting that inbox. Ain't no motherfucking secret. Ain't no yeah. secret. Ain't no secret, for sure, for sure, man. So, let's talk about, you know what I'm saying, you going to prison. What was the first age that you go to that you went to prison, bro? The first age I went to prison was in 1988. I was 15 years old. I went to mm-hmm. prison for two armed robberies. And uh, I didn't go to no, you know, no juvenile or no youth home or anything like that. I went to Florida State Prison. FSP. No, not, I mean, no, I went to the Florida oh, State Prison System, okay, okay. but I went through Lake Butler and all that, but I ended up going to adult camp, which was ACI. Okay. So so it ain't like I was 15 and they spared me, you know what I'm saying, and sent me to something light. No, I wasn't like, I was in a maximum security prison when I was 15. And I'm not bragging about it. I always say this, and I don't, I don't know why I say this, because I have to say it, is that I don't brag about prison, bro. It ain't nothing cool about leaving your family, your kids, and all that. You know what I'm saying? I got a word for it right now. I call it doing the goofy. You know what I'm saying? And that ain't throwing shade on nobody that's in there. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying that that ain't no life to live, bro. For you sure. Know? I'm just trying to get a message out. For sure. So, you know what I'm saying? You went to prison at 15, and you end up with older guys and stuff like that. Well, how was that? How was that? You know what I'm saying? Because I know they, 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 they prey on the young. Well... <clears throat> I was already at 15 years old. I was already like knee deep in the streets. You know what I'm saying? I was already committing robberies and home evasions and had then got kicked out of my grandma's house at that time. So when I got in that environment, it ain't like I was a 15 year old high school kid. So that helped me. Plus I knew a lot of people in there already because I was in the street streets. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to think right now you see a whole bunch of, 15 year olds in the streets. A whole bunch of them. You might see 10 here, 30 here. You go to every hood, you just see a whole bunch of young niggas. Back then, it wasn't like that. Back then, if you saw a 15, 16 year old nigga in the streets back in the 80s and he around killers and drug dealers and pimps, he was a different type of 15. Yeah, a different type of nigga. Yes. Hell yeah. yeah. Back in the 80s, like that. For sure. And he, in, you know what I'm saying? He knee deep in the streets and he doing his shit. Yeah. You're right about that one. You're right about that one. So and it, like going to prison now at fifteen ain't a big thing. Yeah, it ain't. Yeah, right, he went to prison at fifteen, sixteen. Back then in the eighties, if you went to prison at fifteen, bro, you looked down upon. No, nah, hell no, nah, you was a bad uh, motherfucker. Okay. Yeah, if you went to adult prison, a maximum security prison in the eighties at fifteen, sixteen years old, and you went through that and you handled it like a man, you was looked at as a G. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay, so. Did what did you want to do before you went to prison though? Did you have dreams of like you know what I'm saying? Was you in the sports or anything? Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I grew up like the average kid did. You know okay. what I'm saying? It's just that my environment fucked me up. Like I was going to school, I was doing good. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't no hell of a goddamn athlete. I ain't gonna sit here and tell you that, yeah. but, you know. But I played neighborhood ball. You know, um, throw up tackle and basketball and all that type shit. N- never nothing organized, but. Um, at a very, very early age, I was drawn to the allure of the streets for some reason. Okay. You know, and I think in informative years straight up of a, you know what I'm saying, a, 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 of a kid, that environment is very important, man. It's very important. You know, I grew up in East Tampa, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Jackson Heights, man. And, and, and even right now to this day, it ain't good. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they running everybody out and shit like that, but it still ain't good. Yeah. Sending kids, sending kids to prison at, that age of, you know what I'm saying, 14, 15, you know what I'm saying, 16, in Florida, 
Do you feel like that's robbing the youth, you feel me? Do you feel like it's another direction that they can do? You I feel like saying? it's illegal. Okay. And the reason why I feel like it's illegal because y'all have did scientific studies saying that the brain doesn't develop until you're 21 or 22. And so if you're saying that the brain doesn't develop until you're 21, 22, yet and still you holding me accountable as an adult at 15, so it's almost like you taking advantage of a mentally challenged person. That's the way I look at it. For sure. Because, you know, back then, bro, it was boot camps. You know what I'm saying? It was a little bit more, you know, youth programs. Now, a lot of them that got shut down. Correct. So, now they just sent in. Did you ever go to a, a program? No, I ain't never get that. L- listen, man. I done heard some of my friends, right? Them niggas done been in and out of motherfucking jail and shit. Yeah. And they done had them chances at them programs and all that. I ain't never get that shit. You went straight. The first straight time up. I committed that robbery in 1988, I got yeah. direct file. And direct file in Tampa in this whole area, even the Clearwater and St. Pete, that meant that you would go to a juvenile home, but on your 21st day, the sheriffs would come get you and take you to the county jail. That's called a direct file. So mm-hmm. now you ain't no longer a juvenile. Now you in the adult system, and that's what happened to me. I got direct file at 15. And Nobody didn't get hurt or nothing. I just draw the gun on the motherfucking robbery. So, but it was an armed robbery, though. It definitely was an armed robbery. Yeah. Yeah. So, even, you know what I'm saying, speaking on speaking on the, the prison system and stuff like that, man, how you feel about that all together? Man, it's fucked up. Hey, man, can I cuss on you? Yeah, you good. Okay. It's fucked up. It's What's some of the up, craziest man? stuff that you done seen that, it, like, that's fucked up in there? I mean, I done saw everything from the top of the judicial system, from the racism of it, to, the, you know, from the systematic racism of it, all the way down to they beating your ass in there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about this fucked up, man. I'm talking about the juveniles. Um, well, well, I ain't never been to the juvenile, meaning that from all the way to the youth centers all the way up to the maximum mm-hmm. security prisons. Yeah, because, I mean, I, I feel like it starts as soon as, as soon as you go to jail. Yeah, and I don't think it's necessarily, even though the majority of people in these places are black, I don't think it's a black and white thing. I think it's a more of a poverty thing. You know, you know, you know the poor, you know, the have and the have-nots. You know what I'm saying that's what yeah. I think it's about. For sure. So what's some of the things that you was doing in prison though? Like was you reading, you know what I'm saying, working out? Which time I went to prison? How many times have you been to prison? I have been to uh state prison six times and I've been to federal prison one time for twenty one years. And I and I pretty much fucked off a lot of them years. And what I mean yeah. fucked off is um I wasn't trying to learn nothing a lot of those times. You know, at times, you know, I read a few books and shit like that. Like, I didn't really dig into my um, um, education deep, deep into the last seven years of this federal sentence that I just did. You know, I got a GD in prison 20 years ago, so I always been on education, but I'm talking about getting deep into it. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't offer you shit in there. They ain't giving you shit in there, bro. Definitely on the federal level. They don't took the Pell Grants. They don't took the college courses. They don't took all that shit out of there, man. You know what I'm saying? Listen, man, the system is not designed to help you, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's like when I got out, right, they put me in a halfway house. You got to think, i only been out a year. Really six months, but I'm going to say a year because six of those months was in a halfway house and the other six, you know what I'm saying, I've been actually walking around here. But you can't even build your credit in a halfway house, meaning that you almost free and they let you out. You can go to Walmart, you get your hair cut, you can do all this type of shit, but they won't let you build your credit. But I said that to say is that's just a stumbling block. You know what I'm saying? That's a stumbling block, man. It's fucked up in there, bro. Like, 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 I done seen some hopeless motherfuckers in prison, man. You got to think, when you lock a man up, the crack law came out in the 80s. It's a whole lot of men they just let out, say, in 2018 and 19, but they did 30 years, dog, on a handful of crack. They locked up a bunch of crackheads in that situation. Even if you wasn't a crackhead and say you got caught with 50 grams because 50 grams back then was getting you a life sentence, bro. So you mean to tell me you made a mistake when you were 21 and got caught with 50 grams of crack. You went to trial. That's why you got the life sentence. But had you played, you probably would have got 30 anyway. But you went to trial and they gave you a natural life sentence and you the age you is right now. I'm looking at you right now, homie. And when you get out, you're a 60-year-old man. That happened to thousands of them in there. I ain't talking about one or two cases, thousands of them that just got out from it. I was in there seeing it. Yeah, I was in there seeing it. I had a 27-year sentence in the federal system. I did 21 years. The only reason why I only did 21 years is because I played out. Because had I went to trial, I would have lost 
and I'll still be in prison right now with a natural life sentence. Yeah. And what's the difference, you know what I'm saying, what's the difference from the state level and the federal level? Well, the state, you know, state level to state, you know, we dealing with, you know, you know, no shade or nothing but local jokers. Okay. You know, we dealing with your local people. You know, people in Florida, when you're dealing with federal, federal has jurisdiction all over the United States of America. You know, in Alaska and Hawaii and Puerto Rico. Meaning that they can ship you that far. So, yeah, man, it's definitely a big difference. It's, you know, it's the difference in the time. Like, put it like this. Ten years in the state, you're going to do the same amount of time ten years in the state as you do in the Fed. 85%. But I would rather do ten in the Fed. Then, cause a ten in the state is a hard ten, and people think when they say fed like it's something sweet. Y'all talking about that Martha Stewart shit, man? That motherfucking Wesley Snipes shit and all that. No, man, I was in the maximum security penitentiary, United States penitentiary, for eighteen years. Then I went to a medium the last three years. Hey, man, ain't nothing sweet about that shit. Google that shit. You know what I'm saying? Niggas in there getting killed every day, bro. Niggas in there getting raped. You know what I'm saying? You know, you got to watch your homeboy take a shower, meaning that you got to stand guard with a knife on you while your homeboy takes showers. This shit is real. I don't know what this whole perception of they thinking, the, you know, the feds, oh, y'all eat good. You damn right I eat good in there. I eat real good in there. That still don't stop the violence in that bitch. That still don't stop a nigga from getting his head chopped off. You know what I'm saying? And then whenever I be talking, I be trying to talk like a dude got in my inbox. Man, this motherfucker was like 50 years old, like, Man, you cussing, you talking this, all this prison talk. Man, I ain't talking to you. I'm trying to save your nephew, nigga, or your son. That's what I'm trying to say. Maybe I can scan. And this the language that I use. Because I ain't walking up to no motherfucker 15 years old that got a body with a Bible talking like that. You know what I'm saying? Because he ain't going to want to hear that shit. He ain't going to understand. No, nah, he ain't going to understand it. But when I walk up to him like an unk a uh, motherfucking pops, like, check this out, young nigga, man. You don't know what you're doing, my nigga. Put that motherfucking gun down, sit yeah. your ass down. The motherfucking white folks got, you know what I'm saying? The motherfucking white folks got something for your ass, boy. And that message sometimes, it resonates with them. And the reason how I know it resonates, because I used to do it in prison. You know what I'm saying? I, You know, I'm not here to save the world, you know, but I would want somebody to talk to me like that, like the old heads, like that. That whole game missing right there, yeah, bro. Yeah, the old heads is Like, missing. they don't listen to the old heads no sure. more. And they definitely, they definitely, I mean, a lot of them locked up. A lot of the old heads is locked up. Because, you know, like, nowadays, a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, a lot of the jits, they they don't learn because, like, now nah, they giving out the love, you know what I'm saying, the year, the year and the day. Correct. They giving out the 18 months, the love, Correct. you know what I'm saying, 24 months, Correct. under 56 months and shit like that. So, a lot of niggas, they just coming right back home. Correct, correct. Doing the same thing, so it'd be like a repeated cycle. But, like, how many people, like, you know what I'm saying, that you, while you was doing your bid, you just kept seeing coming back and forth, coming back and forth? Man, I mean, I was one of the, well, during my last bid, I didn't come back and forth yeah. quite naturally because I did 21. Mm -hmm. But I was the one that was the that revolver was, yeah. in the state going back and forth. You know what I'm saying? They always and, seeing you in that bid. Yeah. <laughs> they but like see, one thing about like the fed in the state, bid. like, I've been to the state six times. You can't go to the motherfucking Fed six times because your life ain't long enough. Yeah, your life ain't long enough six times. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because the Fed gonna knock so much funk out your ass the first time. They gonna hit you with a ten piece or a fifteen piece and this yeah. and that. You ain't gonna be able to come back to back to back. You know what I'm saying? So like, okay, I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions too, bro. Like, um, you know when they when when they got they got this scare, like you know when they when you hit the state level or whatever, you know they they tell you, you know they finna knock you out as soon as you get in jail or whatever. They finna do this to you. You know, you got to get butt boom. Like, how it is, you know what I'm saying, the intake, when you going, you get off the bus and everything like that. Because a lot of a lot of people don't know. When you going to prison? Yeah. A lot of people just got the perception, man, when you get off that bus, you finna get your ass swung on. No, nah, man. Like, back when I first went to prison, they had a place called um, Lake Butler, Florida. It was a North Florida reception center. And that's the place where you get all your medical done, you get your... You get your psych done, you get your medical, blood work, and everything like that. So everybody had to go there. Now they got three of them. They yeah, got one like in Orlando, yeah. they got OCI, they got one in Miami, which is South Florida. Then they got Lake Butler. By, by when I went, they didn't have that, so everybody from Florida went there. Tell him, this is how they dehumanize you when you first get off the bus. When you first get off the bus coming from the, because you're going to go from the county jail to the reception center, and then you're going to go from the reception center after all your tests to your main compound. Yeah. But when you first get off that bus, it's going to be about 150 of y'all. 
It's a wall, a long ass wall, about a hundred feet long. But on the wall is like a bench, but the bench is gonna run about a hundred feet. You see what I'm saying? So imagine a wall with like a piece of plywood sticking out that far, but it's going all the way down. So literally, you can just sit on it. What they're gonna do is they're gonna script you. This is the first mental breakdown of what they're gonna do to you when you first get to prison. They're gonna script you down, buck naked. When they tell, no, first they're gonna tell all y'all to line up side by side. They're gonna tell you to script down. There's gonna be about a hundred of y'all. Buck naked. It's going to be stank. You're going to be smelling ass, toes, feet. You might be cheek to cheek with a white boy, cheek to cheek with a black dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the shit disgusting. Y'all ain't got on no shoes. You got your barefoot on the fucking concrete. And they're going to script you down. And when they script you down, they're going to tell you to turn around to face the wall. And when they tell you to turn around and face the wall, this is why you're naked now with a, a hundred more men. When they tell you to turn around and face the wall, they're going to tell you to put the top of your head on that bench and spread your ass open. And those officers, because they stand out there the whole time, they got billy clubs, they probably done fucked somebody up and drug somebody off to the side or anything because you done saw all this shit. So you already traumatized, plus you done heard the stories about this place. So when you put the top of your head on this bench, meaning that you're standing straight up and you put it down on that bench, they're going to tell you, you and everybody else besides you to spread your ass open. And when you spread your ass open, they're going to walk from the first man all the way to the hundredth man. So if you're the first man, that means you still going to have the top of your head on that bench with your ass spread open all the way till you get down there. It might take about 45 minutes, anything like that. If you move anything like that, they're going to fuck you up. But that was the mentally break you down to let you know that we own you. You know what I'm saying? That's the psychological damage that's done off rip. Or, or you seeing them beat the fuck out of somebody. You might see them just walk up to a motherfucker and just hit him across the head with a club, blood gushing out. It was bad, man. It was bad. I'm not making this shit up. You're going to get in the comments, they be like, nah, nah, man. Ice about Lake Butler, Florida, man. But that was a place right there. I did a few videos on this place. Them people was in there murdering people, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, anybody that's a Floridian has heard about this place. From Col You know what I'm saying? From K. Wayne Slim, the nigga Charlie. They, I'm going to call it. That's what they used to call him, nigga Charlie. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Robocop, they had all these different little names, you know what I'm saying? But they was in there maiming motherfuckers, killing people, man. This ain't stories that I heard. I went to prison, this is documented. I went to prison, I was there in 1988, man. I was 15 years old, you know what I'm saying? And they was over there literally like doing a whole bunch of crook shit. They was slapping you, they was spitting in your face. Nigga, there was just some racist motherfuckers, dog. And a lot of men lost their life there, even in unmarked graves. Meaning that a lot of them just came up missing, like they just find them. They even got a documentary on it. Somebody told me it was on Hulu. I forgot the name. I think it's called Grand Night, where they talking about the Lake Butler and the massacres and all the shit. Like, this shit is secret in Florida. A lot of people don't know about it, but I actually lived through it. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. They done beat my ass there. I think probably the reason why they didn't kill me, because I was so young. You know what I'm saying? But even when I was there at 15 years old, I wasn't separated from the murderers and the killers and all that. I just, slept, I just slept in a cell block. As far as my everyday activity, going out to wreck or eating with them or going to medical with them, I was right there with them, hanging out with them every day. So, yeah, man, it was fucked up in Florida, man. Why, why do Florida got so many prisons compared to other states? Why you think? It's three states that got the most prisons. Florida, California, and Texas. Mm -hmm. Florida got about 115 prisons. I done been to about 30 prisons in Florida. Not saying it bragging, but it's the truth. I done been to about 30 of them just in Florida. So, and to ask the question why they got so many uh, prisons, think about it. That's the money. You know, Florida, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You got to think that they whole thing. If you got 115 prisons in one state, dog, that's that's a big economy. You know what I'm saying? We know what it is. That's the cash cow. Yeah, that's the money right there for sure. From question. <laughs> so, I mean, a lot of kids nowadays, man, they on the internet. They got this thing. They got this thing called exposing the rat. You know what I'm saying? How you feel about exposing the rat and their paperwork? Man, I feel like man, if you do the crime, man, do your time, man. You ain't got nobody. We know we don't promote ratting in no kind of way. I don't promote it because I was ratted on and I was taken away from my kids and my mother for 21 years. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like if you live in that life, take your lick. If you're a person that go to work every day and you ain't in the streets and somebody break into your house or break into your car and you report that, I don't look at that as rat. 
because y'all didn't sign up for that. Yeah, you're a civilian. You say like, you're a goddamn civilian. I don't look at that. That's almost saying like if somebody snatch your grandma purse. Now this is a way too real moment. I'm gonna have for all you niggas out there. If somebody snatch your grandma purse and she called the police, is she a rat bitch? No, she's not. So look at it the same way as a regular person. You know what I'm saying? That's going to work every day and you do something to them. Far as now, if you in the game and you, you know what I'm saying, you out here in these streets or something like that, nah, we don't promote that, man. Go on, lay down and take that shit. Yeah, but the rap game has got involved to the street game, so it's like, nah. But, but the rap game ain't really no street dudes. Like, it's only a handful of dudes that you can say is really solid. Think, think about how many rappers out there, right? It's a whole bunch of them. But how many of them was actually in the streets for real? You know what I'm saying? It's like... What would you say your percentage is? What you think? Man, the percentage, man, I would say out of every 100 rappers, some real steppers that was putting in work the way they talking and I'm talking about really stepping, I'd say out of every 100, maybe 10 of them, 15, the other 85 playing. And I ain't saying that they ain't done them before, but I'm talking about the way that they talking. I don't mm. believe every young rapper that I hear old or young is just out there killing and murdering. Because you got to think, a lot of these niggas didn't catch cases until they became a rapper. You had a clean record before you became a rapper. Then you became a rapper, you called assault charge. You done shot a nigga now. But prior to that, you ain't had no record. I had a record when I was 12 goddamn years old. You know, adult record when I was 15. Because mm -hmm. it's a, I mean, like, okay, for the kids that 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 is living like that, you know what I'm saying? Like the the Like the kids that is living like that, what could you say to them? Like, you know what I'm saying? That's 12 and 13, 14, not listening to their mamas, you know what I'm saying, not listening to their parents, just out here just doing bad shit, you know what I'm saying? Because it's a they listening to a whole generation of drill rappers. So we're going to get on the drill rappers too, but we're going to talk about that next. But what could you say to the kids, though? I would say to the kids, man, is that I was that kid. I was that kid. You know, I grew up, didn't know who my father was. My grandmama raised me. I grew up in the hood. You know what I'm saying? And um, everything that my granny, rest in peace, told me, it came to truth. So if any kids out there listening to anything, man, stay your ass and man, stay the hell in school, man. I'm talking about work now and play later. I wouldn't wish this on nobody, man. And what I mean by that, you got to think, is that the age that I am, bro, I done gave these people my whole life. Behind bars, literally. I gave my whole life. You know what I'm saying? And I've had opportunities to change this situation around, but I, but, but I done been so stuck in the streets to at times you don't know how to get out. So my advice to any youngster, man, any youngster out there, man, put that shit down, man. Put it down because it ain't worth it. I'm talking about the guns, the drugs, or whatever. Put it down. I'm talking about you can make your own decisions at the end of the day, but look at me. You want to be an old motherfucker like me that's trying to start over at damn near 50 years old? Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I look at the youngsters, they be 21, 22, 23. I be like, dog, you got your whole life ahead of you, dog. You just don't know. Because they don't take nothing but one incident. That's all it takes. Like, people think, like, youngsters think it take a lifetime to fuck up. Oh, he can keep doing this and doing that. Hell no. Nah. Just take they just pull that trigger one time. Or get caught with that fine, that dope at the same time. Because you got a lot of niggas, like I said, that went in the Fed when they was 21 years old for a nonviolent drug offense and end up doing 30 years. 30 years, bro. Yes. It's serious, man. So for all the youngsters out there, man, stay in school. Listen to your parents. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to go down the road I went down. For sure, man. And it's a lot of, I mean, it's a lot of different goddamn entities with this hip-hop shit now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, like we were just speaking on, you know what I'm saying? People exposing rats and shit like that. So I know, I know you were just in the federal prison. BG just got out of federal prison, too. Right. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever met him? No. No, okay. I, ain't, I I haven't met BG, uh, but I know people that, you know, people that know him and stuff like okay. that. Okay. So, it's this dude named Wack 100. I'm pretty sure you heard about him. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He came up with all this paperwork on Christmas Day trying to say BG this, BG that. You know what I'm saying? Did you look into that? I, you know, I, like, kind of looked into it, and I'm kind of with everybody else. Everybody else kind of straddling the fence. I mean, if a rat a rat, you a rat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I can't. I don't know the specific specifics of no case to be sitting up here calling a man, looking a man dead in the face and say, you a rat motherfucker without any proof. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know it was a lot said. You know, they saying it was a plot. 
you know, they schemed, they did this, this, and that. I don't know, so I really don't even want to speak on it because that's too premature right now to make a decision on who's... But, it, but put it like this. I'm going to keep it real. Say if it's a situation where they saying that you testified at the grand jury. You fucking right, you a rat. Let's get that clear. You a rat, motherfucker. You ain't got no business going down to the grand jury making no statements. However, if y'all was in conjunction with each other, you know, you know, far as to try to get over on the government and all that type of shit, now nah, that's a whole nother thing. That's why I say I really don't even want to speak on it because I don't know. Okay, okay. And you know what I'm saying? And and that's just being fair because I I I would want somebody to do that for me. Yeah. So Once again, we not harboring him because if he fucked up, he fucked up. Most up. BG is not exempt. He is not exempt, bro. But you know, we're gonna give him the benefit of the doubt, goddammit. I like it. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. So is six nine a rat to you? Definitely. I mean, you know, six nine got on the stand, so that's like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because but you know what? I just feel like he this rock well, whack rocking with him though. You get what I'm saying? That's the crazy thing. So it's what? like he exposing rats, but he rocking with a rat. And you know what? That's the whole thing. Like he's trying to expose a rat. You know what I'm saying? And that's the whole thing, like. This dude got on the stand, man. And, 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 and we know at the end of the day, you know, white stamp, we ain't going to take that from him, man. We know that was a money move, but sometimes all money ain't good money. You know, he already full up over there. I don't know him or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? I can look at him and tell he a G or whatever, but at the same time, that wasn't no good look, especially after you did that and then you turned around and now you on a whole anti-rent campaign. You know what I'm saying? You on an anti-rat campaign after you did that. So, yeah. Yeah, man. It's, it's it's all tricky over there. I ain't gonna lie. Even though, I mean, we over here in Florida and shit, that whole little West Coast, it's all tricky over there. They business, yes. you know, they politics and all and they that they definitely shit. got a whole lot of politics over there. Yeah, there. most definitely. Most definitely. So, uh, it was just another thing, you know, like nowadays these jets be saying, you know, PC. Take your ass to PC. You you lame as fuck. You a bitch. You this, you that. You know what I'm saying? How you feel about PC, bro? You talking in prison? Yeah. You ever been in PC? Fuck no. I almost got mad you asked me that just now. I got to ask you. We on the show. No, man. I ain't never <laughs> in my life been in no PC. PC is just... PC is for bitches, man. Once you go on PC, it's over with. Man, listen. It's so bad if you go to PC. You could have went to PC... In juvenile, damn, then the nigga ride you and y'all in the state now. Like, damn, nigga, you remember that time y'all went to PC, nigga? Nigga, you remember that time you went to PC? We was in juvenile. Yeah, that ain't no good look, man. No, man, ain't no player, no man, or no real gangster got no reason being in PC. And I got this thing right here, right? You can be somebody, right? You can be, you know, you don't have to be a big man of stature. This in prison, whether state or federal. And you can, you can fight 100 fights, homie. And lose every goddamn one of them and still be a man. A man ain't tested in prison, you know, with, we know with his brawn and his, how tough and big he is. This was in his heart. Mm -hmm. And that's all it's gonna take you through. You know I'm saying, rather, rather, you know what I'm saying, no matter what level it's on, you just got to be a man. So, check, so checking in on the prison level, that's some bitch shit too. That's some bitch shit, man. No, you ain't got no bitch. Put it like this I did 21 years in prison, right? Federal prison. And had I ever been checked in on any yard or ran up, man, my reputation would have been tarnished. Say had that happened to me just one time in 21 years, I probably wouldn't be able to sit on this couch, man. No, I no, no, no. So what's the worst thing you didn't see done to a nigga that didn't just violated in jail? I don't see men get killed. You know, eyes, guards dot. I don't see, you know, uh, 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 dudes get strangled to death. I can't remember how many people I done seen die in prison. Mm. And that's the truth. I can't remember. You I don't know it. if it was twenty. I don't know if it was forty or uh, fifty. I, you know, I just. I was gonna remember. say. So like, you didn't see riots and shit though. Oh yeah, had that, definitely, definitely. You ever been in one? Yes, definitely, okay. definitely. I done been in a lot. Of where you was at? Where, where you was at in your first ride though? Like, you know what I'm saying? Walking through my, that. My first ride was at Indian River in 1989. It was with Tampa and Miami. Okay. You know, it was some. You know, it was like some jitty bug shit. You know what I'm saying? But you know, it was a little ride. You know, in my adult years, um, we got into a few riots, um, like at Homes Correction Institution, Walton, and stuff like that. And back then, it was always cities. It wasn't always Miami. It might be Jacksonville. It might be Orlando. Because back then, it was cliques. It wasn't no gangs in Florida. Mm -hmm. So if it ain't no gangs, when you go to prison, you with your city. It was, you know what I'm saying? Think about it. If there's no gangs, 
So if you go to this prison, this prison hold 1,500 people, it's 300 dudes from Tampa there. It's 300 from Miami, a couple of hundred from Lauderdale, some from Pensacola. So if there's no gang, the only person you're going with is your city. So that's how the clashes used to happen. Mm. So with you saying there was no gangs in the, in the, in the Florida prison, we still talking on the state level. Correct. So, you know what I'm saying? How did the gangs get in there? In in the um, in the state in the state uh you know, when that state came level. on when I was in prison to okay. tell the truth like the the whole gang culture happened in Tampa to me I'm gonna say around about 2008 you know some may you know say argue before then but I'm speaking more on when they start coming to the Fed mm-hmm. 2008 2009 and I started seeing it okay okay yeah. and it was you know so it was you know what I'm saying it was something different for me because I'm a Tampian for real yeah so to hear that certain neighborhoods in my city is blooded out a crip dot that was real crazy to me to hear that because I had been gone so long, but I know times had changed. Mm-hmm. But I'm in here with Crips and Bloods. At, at the same time that I'm looking at it crazy, I'm in here with the real Crips and Bloods. And what I mean the real Crips and Bloods is the ones from the, you know from that soil that's yeah, been from doing the West this. Coast. Yeah, like, sure. exactly from the West Coast that's been doing this shit 40, 50 years. So when I'm seeing some homies come from Florida, it was real mind blowing. Yeah. So like Okay, speaking on the cars and, you know, in the federal prison, like, you was in the Florida car. Who, me? Yeah. Of course. Okay, I, I, Okay, like, for the people that don't know what we're saying, break it down to me, bro. This is what a car means when they say a car. <clears throat> Everybody in the federal prison system is in a car, whether you're a Crip, a Blood, a Vice Lord, Mexican Mafia, Florida, it doesn't matter, you know, you it can even be religious. You're going to be a part of something. Even say if it's a dropout. Say if you're no longer a part of the game and you're a dropout. A dropout means you done dropped out the game. A neutral. Well, huh? Yeah, a neutral, exactly. Yeah. Or no, they call them independents. Independent. It's still the click of them. Okay. So everybody part of some kind of car. A car for everybody means that that's whatever you representing, whether it's a gang or whether or not it's a state. And if somebody going to be ahead of that car, which is called a shot caller, you know, that's what it's called in the Fed. I'm gonna say a shot call. Okay, for sure. And, and how do how do you know what I'm saying the cars move in the federal prison though? Cause they move a lot different than how the state level move. You know, the state is not organized at all when it comes to cars. The federal level is very organized. You know what I'm saying? Like they have no hands on policy where if you get in a dispute with somebody, you can't put your hands on them. Like say if me and you playing ball and you fire me. I just can't bust off on you because say if you black and I'm white, or you Puerto Rican and I'm Spanish and I hit you and we're on the wreck field, now a mass riot done happened. So that's called a no-hands policy. Mm. Yeah, okay. and that goes on a lot there. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, you know what I'm saying? When you just got out in 2000, you know what i say? You just got out in 2022, right? Okay, you just got out in 2022. And... You say you've been gone for 21 years, man. What was the first meal you ate when you came home? Man, that's a damn shame, man. Out of all that goddamn chicken I ate up there, I went to Kentucky Fried Chicken. That's some, <laughs> that's some nigga ass <laughs> shit, man. I'm sorry for the language, y'all, but that's the first place I wanted to go. Some chicken, I'm in, man. I'm in the hood still too. I don't mean to set us lie. back 100 years, y'all, but I went and got some chicken when I got out. Yeah. Sure, no, that man. was the first spot because really that's almost one of the first spots we seen on the highway. I say, stop right there, let me get that shit. But the real meal that I ate for real was just like a whole seafood platter. To yeah, true. Yeah, when I, I actually when I got home, for sure. Yeah. So what you think about all these Ricos that these boys catching? You know what I'm saying? All these all these rappers in being tied into the games. You know what I'm saying? So they bringing the street niggas down plus the rapper. Well, that's a good question that you asked that because I want to elaborate on that. Is the Rico Act in the conspiracies is the new crack law. Meaning back then in my era, they were swiping niggas off the street for dope cases. Now they getting niggas for games. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like we can get you for a drug case, a gun case, or a murder case, and we can hit you with the RICO, what's going to put that in the furtherance of everything that you're doing. Or you can be the head. Say like if you ain't even active, right? You might be a nigga in a RICO case, but you just a big dog and you ain't doing a whole lot. Everything that your partners do, in the furtherance of that Rico, when they get you, they're going to charge you with that. So, yeah, when they rounding them up at 50 a clip right now, the gang members and all that, because you got to think, everybody just focusing on Thugger. That's the only person they focusing on. 
But think about all the individual hoods all over the United States that we ain't even hearing about that they're hitting the same way. Mm-hmm. They grab and hitting 40, 50 at a time. And they learning from that case. And they learning and from they, that oh case. Oh, yeah, let's just do Correct. it this way. That's the new crack. Mm-hmm. Like, you know how the crack law back then sweeped up everybody off the streets and fucked the whole generation up and all that? That's exactly what's going on right now. For sure. For sure. So, man, Terrence Gangsta Williams. How you feel about Terrence Gangsta Williams? He just did like a, what, 20 years also? Yeah. yeah he just yeah, did yeah. a long little time, but he yeah. just got out for, you know what I'm saying, I guess he he basically uh, gave up information. Correct, correct, correct. For, you know what I'm saying, a uh, deceased partner of his. I mean. For what they say. Yes. I mean, Terrence, Terrence Gangsta Williams, you know, he uh, he's admitted what he did. You know what I'm saying? And we know that he's, you know, he said that he's a rat. And I mean, you know, you know, he like, you know, he make jokes and fun of it. So nobody can't get him like that. Because at the end of the day, you know, if he fucked up, he fucked up, you know. Um, but I've I've also said that you have to challenge a man too. That, you know, I like challenge. And this ain't to justify anything that any rat do. I just look at it like this country break men. You know what I'm saying? And what I mean by that is, they break countries. United States will break, goddamn it, they'll go to goddamn Saudi Arabia and break a bitch down. Yeah. So meaning that a whole lot of men, if they would have been thrown that bone, they wouldn't have been able to, you know what I'm saying, they wouldn't have been able to reject it. I'm not going to say that I would have took it. But I'm saying if you tell telling the motherfucker that been in 25 years, man, that all you got to do is close some cases, how many motherfuckers ain't going to get out of prison on it? And I ain't, you know, I'm not promoting it. I'm not promoting it. You know, if you're a rat, you're a rat. I ain't going to promote it. But just think about that. Yeah, correct. You know what I'm saying? For sure. You know, dude ain't, you know, you know, and, and really, it don't matter to me if you sent nobody up the road, because if you're a rat, you're a rat. I'm going to just put that out there, because you don't have to send nobody up the road to be a rat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm Cause just. Because, like, ever since he did that, it didn't became, like, a trend. That's what them boys doing right now, because even, like, I know you heard of King Vaughn. Correct. His 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 racket just did that. Like his uh, co defendant just did that. You feel what I'm saying? What, so what he did? What he did? He basically one of his old co defendants that he had a case with. He caught 28 years for something that they did. Basically a shooting, a attempt, and all that. So he he just got out. His name Big Mike. He from he from the same place that King Vaughn from. Okay. But he said, "All right, King Vaughn did. Uh, he he won his appeal. He went back on his appeal or whatever, and he he won. He out. Oh man, he out." See, anytime, listen, man, it's just it's just point blank. I mean, I don't care who it is. I don't care what name, you big or small. If you give statements to the police, even if nobody, say if nobody get locked up. Say like right now, right? I ain't never testified on nobody. I never put nobody. I mean, I never sworn to the grand jury. I never did none of that. But I made some statements. Say like if I made statements. Say like if, say like if I just debriefed which is just talking to the feds and they might get a motherfucker three years down the line and might not even need me. That's still a statement. That's still some rat shit. Mm -hmm. Cause you never know. Like, especially with certain cases, they never going to close them. Correct. Correct. (laughs) For sure, man. I mean, it's it, all over the world right now. It's it's definitely going crazy because people are, they, they, they trying to close a lot of cases. Correct. So, they, they they using whatever tactics and whatever, you know what I'm saying? And ways. then, you know what, man? You got a lot of dudes, young and old, they never been under that pressure of the government. Because I remember sitting in that room. In the interrogation federal, room. Yes, in the interrogation room, the first day the Fed got me, and they was trying to get me, you know, they, are, they, they knew they had me, but they also knew that I knew about a lot of crimes in Tampa. You know, the whole Tampa Bay area. Mm-hmm. So they get, just kept on trying to beat me down and beat me down and beat me down. And they're just asking me questions and questions and questions. But I'm just say, saying that to say a lot of dudes, bro, can't sit in them rooms like that and take that pressure. You can be out here on the streets right now sitting in a, a Benz, a goddamn Rolls Royce, whatever you want, saying, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. got me. I'm going to stand tall. But a lot of niggas ain't tested and proven. That's where I'm going with it. Mm-hmm. They're not tested and proven, bro. They not, bro. Because you don't know what it feel like, man, to have... 10 federal agents staring down at you and you sitting down at that table. That table seemed like that motherfucker this big. I don't care if it's this big. When you got home, listen, when you got home, you seen, you you got on YouTube and you start seeing all them interrogation videos too, huh? I ain't, I, I ain't like really look at them like that. Yeah. You know but that's I mean? a, that's another, that's another trending thing now. It's a million of them out there. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big old thing now. Like that's what they doing now. As soon as you go in there, they releasing your jail footage. 
They're releasing your interrogation video and they're releasing your wow. arrest video. You know the difference between the old school and the new school, you know, meaning your generation and probably a generation older than you, mm -hmm. is that when we got locked up back then, we didn't even think to tell. It wasn't even a thought in our mind. Like, now when a motherfucker get locked up, it's like a thought in your mind, like, damn, I can tell. Maybe I can get out of this. I can get out of this shit. Back then, it was not even a <laughs> thought, Been used it as a chess, like a, like man, a chess move, not dead. Man, listen, out of every, think about it. Out of every neighborhood in the 80s and 90s, it was only one or two snitches that we knew of. And you know that nigga. Yeah, and you know him. Mm -hmm. Now, out of every hood, how many snitches? Shit, shit, every, every couple households. Come on, bro. <laughs> Back Every then, it was maybe out hood. of a whole hood. Yeah. Maybe one or two motherfuckers that you heard about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because when you went to jail back that's then. Just like, that's just like that's just like anything else, though. You know you know who the gangsters is in the hood. You know who the right. little rats is. You know the little, you know the niggas who doing weird shit. You know everybody. Now it's all like mixed in. Yeah, it is, So man. it's like, it's hard to tell nowadays, though, bro. And I, and I get what you're saying because I'm like in the middle. You feel me? At them ages are like. All right, I seen I seen what niggas was doing the things the right way. You know what I'm saying? There was a lot more structure. Then I'm in the, I'm a, I'm over here on this side where it's like these niggas ain't got no morals. It ain't no structures because it's like nowadays people don't even got loyalty for their own brothers, their no, own cousins, no, their own no. family, their mama. Like they don't know about like yeah. taking care of them no more. Yeah, I remember times, man. I was just telling my homeboys that I remember times that we'll be shooting dice on this corner. Now this three killers. It's me and me and three, four uh, people. I'm talking about these stone cold killers, and we shooting crap, or we might be drinking and smoking, and an older elderly woman come by. We are automatically in our brain hide the blunt, hide the blunt. grab the bottle, and get out her way and let her come by, and we don't even know her. That's how you know what I'm saying. That's how much it done changed. Nah, it ain't like that. Them young niggas that keep on shooting the crap and this yeah. and that, and the old lady got to go around their little ass. For sure. So I'm gonna ask you this question, bro. Was you a was you a, a robber back in the day or a trapper? I was both. You was both. You know, I didn't got a whole lot of money robbing, okay. and I didn't got a whole lot of money trapping. Meaning that, um, I done been out of state trapping. Okay. See, you got different type of dudes in the street. You got just straight robbers. That's all they do. They yeah. rob and they'll run out of money and they'll rob again. Jack boys. Yeah, exactly. Sure. They jack boys. Well, me, I was a type of dope boy that I might have twenty thousand dollars in my pocket, but I might still kick your dough in for ten thousand. Most duh. You know what I'm saying? That was just part of the hustle. So I was, you know what I'm saying? I was a two-way, you know what I'm saying? I was a two-way hustle. So, so while you was in jail, though, your, 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 your city became popular for, for taxes. For yeah, tax man. Fraud. Yeah, and I missed that whole way. I was mad about that. <laughs> you was mad about that shit, though, I was mad though, as a bro. motherfucker about that, man. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I'm already knowing. I'm already knowing. Because I ain't gonna lie. 9 to <laughs> 12 yeah. or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 9 to 12. Because that was a whole different thing. And that created a whole nother... Another generation of scammers, what we still got right now. So yeah. the niggas is right now, they going to the banks, they doing all this little fraud stuff, all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? how many people did you see in, the, in jail, bro, for white collar crimes? Like, you know, stuff well, like that. Well, I was in a pen for 18 years, so I didn't see too many. Too of many? Them, you know what I'm saying? Okay. But I was hearing about what you're saying about yeah. how goddamn Tampa was, you know, Tampa and St. Pete and Clearwater, this whole area was looking like Atlanta. Yeah. I was hearing all that, you know, foreign cars everywhere and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm just mad that we ain't make the money work. <laughs> nah, they ain't make the money. Nah, work, they ain't make man. the money work. Nah, they definitely, <laughs> they definitely didn't, man, for sure. So, what you doing? 21 years in jail, bro. Well, more than that. How much could you say your mental change up until this point that you up in your life? I'm gonna say that anybody from doing 21 years in prison that says there's nothing wrong with him and he ain't going through a little anxiety at times and PTSD or something like that, you know, that says a lot that, that he really is crazy. Because I go through my ups and downs with it. You know, people can't see it all the time. They think I have it all together. But, yeah, I definitely go through it, man. For, come on, man, 21 years, man. You still catch yourself. What, what What's some of the stuff that you still catch yourself doing? I get up at 5 o'clock every morning, like clockwork. Like my eyes, I don't care what kind of night I have. I, I can go to sleep at 3 o'clock in the morning. And at 5 o'clock, my eyes are instantly open up. And that come from being in that violent environment I was in. And I had to get up every morning because it was protocol. Because you don't know if a motherfucker going to run in the cell on you and kill you. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be up on your feet. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you sleep in your cell. You don't went to sleep at 10 o'clock that night. But when they pop the doors, because the police going to come by and pop every door. And you're in a maximum security prison. 
and they coming by and they popping these doors and you still sleep, but you don't know that somebody can creep in there and try to hurt you, white, black, Mexican, or anything, or you don't know the politics of the prison, meaning that something could have happened last night in a whole nother unit. But this morning, you don't know that happened last night in a whole nother unit, but now it's a sneak attack. Mm -hmm. So to avoid all that, at 5 o'clock when the police open the door, I'm already on my feet. Shoes on and all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm already <laughs> scrapped up and everything. I ain't thinking about nothing versus me just laying there. For somebody sure. coming in and get me, man. Look, look, you got a lot of good men that done lost their life like that. Yeah, man, that's a different world in that, man. Yeah. For all y'all people, I'm telling y'all, if y'all think that the federal system is all roses and beautiful and pretty, yeah, we eat good and all that because there's a whole bunch of players in there and, you know, dudes that think they ballers or whatever, man. But at the end of the day, man, in the maximum security, USP is just a different world, man. That's the most violent place in the world, man. It is, man. Y'all better Google this stuff. Google up the Polarks, the Big Sanders, McQuarrie's, the Lee Counties, and look at them body counts at these places, man. Yeah, it's just like you out here on the streets. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know what? It's like, it's way more safer out here in the streets to me because you can avoid it and create your own world out here. Meaning you can live out there, you know, and, you know, you live out there on the beach somewhere, you know, if you get yourself together. Imagine being in a pen like that and, and you, you can't, can't go get, nowhere. Yeah, you can't go nowhere. You got yeah. to be here for 20 years. You got to be here for 20 you years. You got to wake like up this. and see this nigga. Yes. You got to wake up to stabbings and, you know, dudes getting taken advantage of and, you know, shit, shit that you wouldn't normally see. Because you got a lot of dudes that the federal United States penitentiary made them an animal. And what I mean by made him an animal is, say you get a dude that ain't never in his life been in trouble. Say if he ain't never in his life been in trouble. And he catch a dope case. They give him 15 years. Put him in the United States penitentiary. He in there. Now, he's a man. Now, he no dude ain't no punk or nothing like that. But when they put him in there, he see the shit that he's seeing. But he ain't never stabbed nobody or killed nobody. I done seen them turn dudes like that into animals to where now they in there stabbing. They're not doing it on their own. they just in there, you know, living and defending themselves. Mm -hmm. But now they done became murderers because the system made it that way. Mm. Yeah, it's serious, man. Man, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of lost youth, you know what I'm saying, in the prison system right now. And it's a lot of, you know what I'm saying, OGs that's still in the prison system right, right. now. And I definitely, you know what I'm saying, free all y'all boys for sure. Because it's definitely like, you know what I'm saying, for uh, I can speak on the solid ones, you know. It'd it, it be crazy in, you know, the Florida, the court system. Correct. I, like I told you, it start from when you going to jail out here, man. Correct, correct. They get you there. Because they, they just, you know what I'm saying, you can go to jail for a trespass and then it lead up to a dope charge, lead up to a gun charge, all that. You know what I'm saying? You got to think, man, the system ain't designed to help no young brothers. Man, they want them young, man. I'm looking at all the young brothers out there. No, I ain't going to fuck all that. All you young ass niggas out there. I ain't finna PG-13 this shit for y'all ass. Mm -hmm. They want you, dog. They want you young, dog. They want your ass at 12, 13, 14 years old, suck 20, 30, 40 years out your ass, let you out of old man, broke down, you ain't got no goddamn SSI, you ain't got no retirement plan or nothing. That's the plan. Really, they want you dead. But if they can get 20, 30 years out your cool. So I advise all y'all, man, get the fuck out the way, man. If y'all ain't ready and y'all don't know these laws, you running around here, you toting a gun, you a convicted felon, that's 15, 20 years sometime. Like, Dude got in my inbox and tell me, because I said, yeah, man. I said, a gun life for me, he, dude, made it seem as if I was fabricating that. I said, listen, let me explain something to you. A gun might be five years for you. It may be five years for him, 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 whoever. But for me, Terrible. you fucking right. I just got out of federal prison. For, I just got out of federal prisons for guns, man. I just got a did 21 years for guns. They gave me, goddamn, they enhanced me in every kind of way they could. So if I get caught with the same gun, you get caught. Yeah, you might get 38 months. I'm going to get life. At least a 30 piece. For the same gun, for the same action, I ain't use it in that. And I'm going to at least get 30 years for that. Yeah. No, oh, definitely, man. Let's get into Honeycomb and Brazy. What's up? I like Honeycomb and Brazy. I've been cheering for that boy from the beginning, man. I don't mean boy in a bad way. You know, you know how we're talking. So I've been cheering for that boy for a long time, man. Mm -hmm. He just can't get it right, man. And he's a talent, bro. You know what I'm saying? I know he, like, Brazy is one of the dudes that I look out in the streets, even though I don't know him. I was in the pen with his uncle. Plus, I done been in his city putting down dope. 
But Breezy, one of the ones I look at as one of the real ones. You know what I'm saying? And to see all that talent like that just go to waste for um, him, uh, you know, not being able to think these situations out or whatever the fuck going on. That man done lost family members to this shit. Yeah. Now the feds done got involved. You got to think, all this was a plot. And what mm -hmm. I mean by a plot A is, setup, really. You damn sure. right it was a setup. He had just got out. There's no reason a nigga like him got out to the bag like that the way he did. That he supposed to be sitting in jail for a gun. It's supposed to have been 20 niggas on the side of him. Because every time I seen him since he got out, there's been a whole bunch of niggas around him. Mm -hmm. How the fuck he got the gun case, bro? How? I wouldn't give a damn if they would have caught that bitch in his lap. It supposed to have been a nigga standing right there screaming burp, uh, bloody murder saying I'm the one threw it in his lap. Am I lying? No, he ain't lying. One that's going to testify to the jury, to the grand jury, hey, man, y'all found it in his lap. I'm the one who put it in his lap. What that nigga doing in jail, man? Let's think about the logic of that. What is he doing in federal prison? I mean, federal jail for a pistol, bro. And even if y'all would have arrested for him, right? All right, man, you know, sometimes they come on the scene and they see that shit and, you know, we're going to straighten it out, though. Ain't no way in hell it supposed to went this far from a state level. Now the feds done picked it up and now he locked into the federal system with this shit. So come on, man, we know what it was, man. Honeycomb Brazy was up there in that small ass country ass town where he from and them white folk got tired of it. Mm -hmm. That's the great state of Alabama, man. You don't want to fuck with them white folks in Alabama, man. And they go down up there, <sighs> for sure. Alabama, Mississippi, really none of the, I mean, none of the southern states, but mm -hmm. Alabama, Mississippi, you know, shit. Hey, Louisiana. Man. Yeah, Louisiana. Come on, man. For sure, for sure, man. And I ain't going to so lie. So shout bro. out to Honeycomb Brazy. Yeah, shout out to Honeycomb. Keep your head up, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, I like you, man. He a solid young nigga, man. He just, he dropped the ball on this one, man. Hopefully he come out on top with this, man. Most definitely, most definitely. This is my last question to you before we get out of here. I know you spoke on this on another podcast, man, about this jar of gold that you seen in, in jail, man. Yeah. You could tell me about them jar of gold? When I went through Lake Butler, Florida in in 88, um, they had a pickle jar, a big pickle jar about this big, and I saw it with my own eyes. You know, because Florida back then, if y'all don't know for all y'all, maybe y'all young, y'all don't know the history of Florida, is Florida was known for gold tea. You know, and that was a big thing even before rap. You know, your grandmas, them had it, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And they was kicking dudes' goals out of their mouths and filling these pickle jars up with it. And that was almost like their trophy. You know, when you hear these stories, this is true, man. They had the dude K. Wayne Slim, Nigga Charlie. You had Robocop. You had the Whiteheads. It was like families of these motherfuckers, and it, and it was it was like generations of them. You got to think this shit. You would think me telling this story right now that this shit was fucking a hundred years ago. Mm -mm. It was it, it. It happened to me, <laughs> and I'm sitting right here on your couch, bro. It happened to me, dog. They did some fucked up shit up there in Union County, man. Up there in Lake Butler, Union County. I was Lake Butler, man. It's legendary down here in Florida. Legendary. I, you know what? Don't ask me. Ask your grandma. Ask your uncle, your daddy. If they from 40, if they really from 35 to 40 years on up, ask them about Lake Butler, man. I'm going I'm to ask you this, too. So what would you say, because you know Lancaster was one of the ones, too. What's that? Lancaster? The yes. castle? Yes. Lancaster, I went through Lancaster. Yeah. Lancaster was a transit slash permanent. Meaning it was a permanent compound, but they also do transits. Mm -hmm. It wasn't nothing like Lake Butler. Yeah. When it, the late, I mean, the 2000s, though, it went again turned up, though. Okay. It okay. made it a JIT camp and all. That bill was going down. Okay, okay. Yeah, it okay, was I going down that. in the JIT camp, I'll for sure. Because, like, it was, land, like, when I was coming up, Lancaster, Brevard, you know, they had uh, uh, the one you just said, Lake Butler. Indian River. Yeah, Indian River. Uh, uh ACI. Correct. You know what I'm saying? It was a few of them, though, dog. It was a few of them. Everybody was like, nigga, as you go, you get up out of this county and you go in there. You got them gladiator right, school. You, better, you got the gladiator school. You got to get right. ready. You know what I'm saying? Because niggas yeah. waiting on, because, you know, certain niggas waiting on, hey, to figure out if they finna stay in this county or they finna go up the road. Yeah, man. For sure, man. Well, we definitely appreciate you, you know what I'm saying, for coming on the podcast. Thank you, man. Us, Ronnie man. Red, man. Ronnie Red on all platforms, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Hit that like and subscribe, man. It's been a pleasure meeting you, man, and coming over here. Because at the end of the day, I support all men. 
but definitely I'm a state of Florida. I am a Floridian all day, every day. But I got, you know, good men that I mess with all over. Shout out to my co-defendant, Gigi. Shout out to my son, Lorani. Shout out to Birdman. Buy that book. Understand me. And shout out to all the good men locked up. It's too many to name. I'm not finna sit here and name all you motherfuckers. So don't hit me in no inbox. Just know that just know that I love you, goddamn it, and I shouted y'all asses out. Most deaf, man. We are Florida Podcast, man. We're tapping in and tapping out, man. Running red, man. Let's go. Yes, sir. Brr.